Hello guys, we are going through a landmark judgment of Supreme Court in this series. This judgment which we are talking about shape our world. They talk about rights and liabilities which we enjoy in India. Okay? Rights which uh, we are going to discuss in this video is about right to silence. Okay? Someone who have watched a lot of Hollywood movies must have known about the Fifth Amendment uh, because people invoke, uh, like I would, I'm invoking my Fifth Amendment which give them the freedom not to speak or not to give answers in, into, the, into the court. Uh, we have something similar uh, to that in India. Okay, so it's, it's exciting that what we see in the movies is also available uh, in India and which can be, can be used in the real life. Exciting, isn't it? Uh, so let's just start with today's video. We are going to talk about a case uh, Nandini Satpati versus D.L. Dhani. It's 1978 case. So first thing which is very important to understand that uh, the characters of it, like who was uh, Nandini Satpati and who was Dhil Dhani, okay. So first thing like uh, people from Orissa uh, or that side of the country must be knowing that Nandini Satpati was a former chief minister of Orissa. Uh, she was from Indian National Congress and Dhil Dhani was a deputy superintendent of police uh, vigilance uh, uh, Katak, okay. He ordered her to appear before him, okay. In case of disproportionate asset case, so also provided her question in relation to her alleged accusation of disproportionate asset. But Nandini, uh, CM Nandini, it would be uh, better to say, uh, axiom, uh, she refuses to answer the question. On a refusal to answer question, Deputy Superintendent of Police filed a complaint against her in front of magistrate. Because under Article 179 of IPC, which is if someone refused to answer a public servant's authorized to question is, is an offence. Okay, and hence Mr. issued her a summon for appearance. So someone got issued against her that okay, come appear before us. And then Nandini Shitpati, she uh, approached High Court uh, for, for this, against this order, but the plea was got rejected. Then she appealed in the Supreme Court under Article 132.1. It is about um, jurisdiction of appellate, uh, appellate jurisdiction of Supreme Court in appeal from High Court in certain cases. When we say in certain cases, which means that after receiving a certificate from the High Court, that the case involves a substantial question of law. If the case involves a substantial question of law, only then someone can approach the Supreme Court to, you know, verify and get the answer of that substantial question. Okay. So defense which was taken by her is that. Article 23 uh, and the immunity under section 1612 of CRPC not bound to answer question that exposes her of, to a criminal charges. She is not bound to answer the questions uh, by which she can be implicated in the criminal charges and see and her you know complete defense is around that these sections and article are wide enough to shield her from any summon issued by magistrate means order by magistrate is not valid that's what that's what her claim was okay so just to go a little bit deeper around like what section 20 says like and which as section 20 is a part of uh, you know part 3 of the constitution uh, and section 20 talks about protection in respect of conviction for offense and section 23 guarantees that no person accused of any offense okay shall be compelled to witness against himself it means that we cannot be compelled to give anything which results into us ourselves getting implicated. Okay, that's the that's the that's what enshrined in Article Twenty, uh, uh, Clause Three of the Constitution. So, what the question which is in front of a Supreme Court, which when she approaches to the Supreme Court after uh, again uh, after High Court was that what is the scope and the meaning of article 23 of the constitution as is, as regard to the term accused and compelled to witness against uh, oneself what is the meaning of it and what is the meaning and scope of 161.2 of crpc which says that there is no obligation to answer question which have tendency to expose him to criminal charges okay uh, but on the other hand if you see like section 179 of ipc which talks about the refusing to answer the public servant authorized to question. 
because that's the violation which happened, which resulted in the magistrate issuing the summons. So, if we see there is a contradiction between these two, section 161.2 of CRPC and section 179 of IPC. So, question arises, where do we demarcate the boundaries of benefit of doubt in setting section 161.2 of CPC, CRPC and section 179 of IPC? So, that's the major question. Okay, let's see what's, what our Supreme Court has interpreted everything, right? Because that, that's that's what we are trying to understand like in this complete series. Co court took a very wide view of Article 23, holding that the prohibitory scope extend not only to the procedure of court, but also at the stage of investigation. Even at the stage of investigation, these things still holds true. It is held that ban on self-accusation is not confined to the offence regarding which interrogation is made, but extend to other offences about which accuses of apprehension of implication from his answer. If the, if the accused feel that, if he gives some answer, some, push, uh, some details, uh, which will implicate himself, he can refuse, he, can, he, can, he is very well in his, within his right not to answer those questions. Which means even compelled testimony okay, is violative of Article 23. Which means police cannot compel someone to give the like, you give some sort of torture, one degree, third degree, whatever it is, you cannot compel those uh, type of uh, testimonies of no value and that is not allowed. It's a violation of Article 23 of the Constitution. And Section 179 IPC has a component of mens rea, okay, where there is no willful refusal but only the unwitting omission or innocent wording of the offence is not met. So, you are not saying something has not become become an offence under section 179 of uh, IPC because you have a component of mens rea attached with it. Okay? That's how this, they demarcated the boundary. But few safeguards are also provided because uh, you can understand, right? We also need to provide safeguards around it. Otherwise, no one is going to sell anything to the police. The accused, it is said that accused cannot deny an unreasonable and vague apprehension and possibilities. Okay? Otherwise, like, you can say anything. Someone can say anything and get rid of it, right? So, any vague and unreasonable apprehension is something which is not appreciated uh, as, as per the code. That's what the safeguards are provided. Accused have to answer where there is no clear tendency to criminate. Okay. So, these are the few safeguards which was provided under it. And so, and, and also like from the case perspective, Nandani Satpati won this, uh, won this case. Appeal was allowed and uh, Prosecutor prosecu uh, proceedings were, uh, were quashed, means summons got quashed altogether. Okay, so yeah, that that was interesting. Like we have right to be silenced. No one can compel us. Uh, that's the right which is provided to us. So yeah, please share your views. What do you think of right to silence? Such wide interpretation is good, or is too wide to type of society we live in. Yeah. Thank you. If you like this type of content, then please like and subscribe. Thank you.